Welcome to both of you. you. Knowing um, what happened very soon after. Yeah. yeah. It is actually seeing your daughter effectively alive when you last saw her alive is actually quite hard actually. I'm surprised how I feel this morning. Mm. I wasn't expecting to. So apologies for that. But it's uh, yes, it is our child. Anyone who's a parent knows how that might feel or what that. That, how that could make you feel. Yeah, yeah. You, don't need, you just certainly don't need to apologise because, of course, it's the, the, re, uh, the, the sad, tragic reality of it is, of course, Tanya, that they were the, the last moments that, that she was alive and had it not been for uh, a mislabeled sandwich, then hopefully she would have still be with us now. Um, let's talk about your meeting last night. You met up with mm -hmm. Michael Gove yeah. um, because what we want is Natasha's law to become uh, enshrined in law, as it mm -hmm. were. How did that meeting mm -hmm. go? It went really well. We, we weren't really sure what to expect. We've never done anything like this before, but um, he called up a meeting. The consultation is just about to go in, which means that uh, the public will be able to give their opinion on what the law change propose, proposals might be and how they feel about it. And he's really behind the full labelling as we are. He's exactly on the same page as us, and that's really important. Mm. So we, we asked him how he felt that the feeling was amongst the industry um, mm. generally with, with you know, other retailers and et cetera. And apparently the feeling's quite strong that they're in our favor and it's yes. hopefully going to move forward as, as we want it to. Yes. So there are four different types of, of sort of um, options in consultation in terms of the labeling, aren't there? You mentioned the full labeling. So mm. every single ingredient that goes into the food stuff on the label. And I think you might be able to explain better. There's also a list of allergens mm. that, that can go in. That's right. I mean, just to be clear, I think to viewers, it's so to, to remove any sort of uh, uh, misunderstanding. This is for pre-packaged foods. Mm. If, if the food is not pre-packaged, it doesn't actually apply. So this is if for, for food retailers who are going to put things in boxes, packages, packages it up. So it is a choice a retailer has. It's in their choice to do that. And it, what we're asking for is full labelling of allergens, and that is the 14 well-known allergens, uh, and also the full ingredients. Mm. Um, because, particularly, people today, more than ever, have allergies, severe allergies, to many things, not just those 14 particular mm. things. So it allows people who might have an allergy to something else to immediately see the ingredients and not buy that product, and therefore potentially save their life. That's what we, we actually must come back to. This is life-saving issues, actually. It's not a, just a convenience or a fashion or a trend or a fad. It's about lives, and, and lives really, really matter. Um, the, the, I mean, the, the, the positive feedback you have from Michael Gove is that within the industry, it seems like there is, there is a will to make this, this change. Uh, in the past, a few uh, of the sort of the... the, the the groups that support the manufacturers have suggested this is quite an onerous task to have to put all of these ingredients onto the labels. Um, strikes me that having to deal with somebody dying because someone's eaten something that they didn't know was poorly labelled would be more onerous. Um, and what's your reaction when you felt there's been sort of some pushback? At time? I, think, I think whenever there's change and there's change on a larger scale, I think people will always be worried, be nervous and they dig their heels in. And it happens throughout our society. We make changes when we see things aren't working well and especially when it's dangerous to people. We, we, we worry, but the changes go through and they save lives. And that's going to happen again. The change will require companies to look at how they do things and to maybe to change practices and procedures. But then once that's done, they won't look back. And mm. actually, it protects them as well. It protects them who are selling products to, to consumers as well as the consumer. Yes, I think that, that's really important. Mm. It, this is a two-way thing. This is actually quite business-friendly in, in, in many ways because while you, the first reaction might be, oh, my gosh, this is onerous, but actually, if you think about it a little bit more, it puts information which is readily available actually already in front of people and allows better decision-making and choice, protects the retailer and actually protects the citizen or the shopper. It's mm. a, a win-win, actually, at the end of the day. If you think about it just for a moment, it's a win-win for everyone. Sorry, can I also say it's mm. worth mentioning that when the um, shops or, or the um, actual retailers, they receive the products, so the ham, the bacon, the chicken, the mayonnaise, all the ingredients are on there. 
they have to be by EU law. So they so receive why do they all the ingredients. Not put it on? I think that's what some people might be confused about. Is it, mm. is it is because it cost? cost or is it because they want to describe their food in a way that's less technical? Can I put it that way? I think you could put that very question to some of those big businesses and, and ask them to answer that honestly. Mm. Yeah. I couldn't speak for them, but we might have some ideas, but they may not be, they may be, you know, hearsay. So they've never really given you a clear answer to that? No. no we, we don't really know why that no. is, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it, I mean, it would be uh, a wonderful thing if Natasha's Law can become enshrined yes. in law, yes, really uh, particularly to the point where you want it to be with all of the, the ingredients labelled as well. Mm. Uh, I imagine for, for your family and for the two of you, it's given you a great focus in the aftermath, the tragedy of what's happened, to be able to remember her like mm. this, with this, hopefully this legacy that, as you've already pointed out, will save lives. We have to do it. I mean, what mm. happened to her was the biggest fear a parent ever has for their mm. child when they have allergies. And there are so many people out there with allergic children, we have to do it for them because we understand exactly how they live their lives every day, how they feel, how frightening it is. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't not do this, and this is in Natasha's name, it's what she would want, mm -hmm. because she lived with it. She knew how hard it was. Yes. Do you think it's becoming more increasingly a problem because, of course, um, there is an increasing number of people who now have allergies? We don't know why, really, that's, that's increasing. It. There's all sorts of theories, but it is becoming a greater problem. There are those, though, aren't there, that argue, actually, it's up to the individual to ask. You know, if you know you have this problem, you take personal responsibility for this problem and you ask, what do you say to those? OK, it's, it's a good question. I think it's really simple. That is the practice, to, to, to a degree at the moment, ask. But the, I think time and time again in the last few months, many programmes and many investigations by press and newspapers have shown that when you do that, Basically, the information is either not there, mm. it's very misleading, and the people who are giving the information, who are ordinary citizens, just like us, like all of us, actually are not equipped to give that information on such a life-threatening mm. issue. And actually, it's very, very unfair to ask someone who is not a doctor to be a doctor. Mm. I mean, that is ridiculous. So it's just simple, by putting it on a label, you basically get around that whole issue and, and you give people information at at point of purchase and then you don't have the issue about asking because mm. it breaks down and it, it, what will happen is if that was a situation or well, if that's an option that's allowed to happen you're going to have retailers having complete nightmares mm. and more mm. people dying basically and nobody wants that no. especially no. the retailers no, it's a horrible pressure on staff as well is it Terrible. Imagine you're mm. some saturday girl and you, you know you mm. don't know the detail and yeah it, um gave us a statement we have made a number of changes since we learned of natasha's death and have made a clear commitment to develop full ingredient labels for our freshly made products mm. uh, we'll be rolling out these new labels nationwide later this year uh, how do you feel that they've reacted and worked with you since the situation arose well, that, that's very positive, and we're really hopeful that that actually happens. It's been trialled in one, one of their shops in London. We've had nothing. We don't know what's happening. Um, but they've got an opportunity to really lead the way. Yeah. So if they can do it, then others can follow. And we mm. just hope that um, people... Well, we know people are watching, so let's just hope that um, it really is what they say it yeah. is.